Okay, here we're going to start in Ephesians chapter 3 now. Uh, before we get into chapter 3, it, it's very much linked into chapter 2. So we'll do a, a quick review of the end of chapter 2, and that leads us into chapter 3. So uh, if we remember from last video in chapter 2, we went quite deep into this about the uh, prophecy of Ezekiel and uh, this joining together of the two sticks. So he's talking here, in, we're in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12, because I have my font set big, you don't see the... Uh, you don't see the name of the book up here, but it's there. Now, uh, starting in verse 12, that at that time, th this is to the Gentiles, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. So you were not a part of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were sometime, at one time were far off are now made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who has made both one and broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So those who believe in Jesus now, whether they are a Jew or a Gentile, both are, are, in, are in a part of one new covenant now. And both of them are Israel. That new stick is Israel. So we'll just go on uh, here. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, make even the law of commandments came, contained in ordinances. So uh, that law of commandments contained in ordinances, that's the law of Moses, it set the Jews apart from every other race. It was more; it was based upon race very much. Uh, it it takes that down, and it's no longer based on race. Now it's based on belief, and it's based on the Holy Spirit. But other than that, it's very much the same. Okay, that, that he might reconcile both, both the Jews and the Gentiles, to God in one body called Israel, by the cross, having slain the enmity by the cross. And he came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were near. For through him we both have access by one Spirit to the Father. Now, now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets in Jesus Christ himself, being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows into a holy temple unto the Lord. So it's the same same uh, paradigm as in the Law of Moses, but built in this new concept around Jesus Christ. And then, in whom you also, you, the nations of the world, also, together, are built for a habitation of God through the Spirit. So God, through the Spirit, dwells in His people. So, we covered this in the last video, but this is a, this concept can be found not only in Ezekiel, but in all of the prophets. Um, it's peppered throughout the old uh, the Hebrew prophets, and through the even in the Torah and and the Hebrew history, this concept is there. So, this is uh, Paul explaining this concept to Christians. So now we'll carry on with chapter 3. So, <clears throat> for this cause, 
What cause? For the cause of explaining to us this new concept. Right? For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to given me to you word. So, um, for the, those Gentiles who have heard of this dispensation, as God gave something out, he dispensed something, and it's the grace of God, it's given to Paul to give to us. How? That by revelation, he made known to me the mystery, as I wrote before in a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So what's he talking about? By revelation, so Jesus gave Paul a revelation, and he made known to Paul a mystery. And this mystery is what he wrote before in a few words. When you read it, you may understand Paul's knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Well, what, what writing is he talking about? He's talking about what he just told us in chapter 2. The stick being joined together and how um, he didn't really point out that one prophecy. But I, I use that prophecy. I use that prophecy as uh, one of the greater examples of what he's talking about. And that, uh, what he's talking about, is found throughout the Hebrew prophets and throughout the Hebrew Bible. So this mystery he's talking about is, is what wasn't understood before. Now that Christ has come and died and on the cross and rose from the dead and completed his mission, now this new thing, this new understanding of the Hebrew prophets is given to the world. And Paul is saying, he gave it to me to give to you. Because this is the job he gave me. And that's a pretty big claim. But us looking back in history, you can see uh, Paul is one of the most prolific Christian writers in the New Testament. He wrote half of the New Testament. We have so much knowledge of the new of the gospel from Paul. So he he actually was what he said he was. So let's take a quick look here. So. We're here in Acts chapter 8. Uh, just to take a quick look at Paul's conversion. Okay? Because Paul used to be named Saul. And when he became a Christian, he be, he changed his name to, to Paul. So, and Saul was consenting unto his death. That's when they stoned Stephen, uh, who was uh, prophesying and speaking against the council. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. That's how big the Christian church was, really. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made a great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church entering every house and hail, hailing men and women and committed them to prison. Therefore they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. So it was Saul who scattered the church and that was prophesied. I will uh, strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. So now we'll skip up to chapter 9 because it, it went on into a different narrative. And then it comes back to Saul again. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and desired of him letters 
to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way that um, is the, the, the what the church the Christians church was called right at the start by the Apostles was the way they that was in what they named themselves they said they called it the way okay of this way whether they were men or women he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem and as he journeyed he came near Damascus and suddenly there shined around him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and he heard a voice saying to him Saul Saul why do you persecute me and he said who are you Lord and the Lord said I am Jesus who you persecute it is hard for you to kick against the pricks what does that mean kicking against the pricks well they have um, when they have a like a horse or a donkey tied to a, a cart they put um, where so that the horse won't keep kicking the, the linkage the wooden linkage that joins the donkey to the cart so that he won't keep kicking at it, they put these uh, prickles ar around the um, the yoke that um, if he kicks at it, it digs into his legs a bit, so he'll stop kicking at it. So that's what that means, is it's hard for you to kick against the pricks. So Jesus is telling Saul, you are my donkey and you are kicking against the pricks. And Saul, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what will you have me do? And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the city, and it shall be told to you what you will do. And the men journeyed with him and stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, because he was blinded. And they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. And he was three days without sight and didn't eat or drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord said in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. Arise and go into the street which is called Straight. They, uh, that street is still there in Damascus. Uh, you can go see it today. And inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prays and has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on your name. But the Lord said to him, Go your way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hand on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared to you in the way as you came, has sent me that you might receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And he immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight wherewith, and he rose and was baptized. And when he received meat, he was strengthened. Then Saul was certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus, and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. And all that heard him were amazed and said, isn't this he that destroyed them which called on his name in Jerusalem and came here for that intent that he might bring them bound to the chief priests? But Saul increased more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt in Damascus, proving 
that this is the very Christ. So that's Saul's conversion. So this, this is what Paul is talking about. Come back to Ephesians chapter 3. How by revelation he made known to me the mystery. So that's the mystery. Is the Jews and Gentiles being joined together into one stick. And that stick is called Israel. So Israel is the people of God in whom dwells the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. And that whether they are Jews or Gentiles makes no difference because it's not about race. So this is the mystery. Okay? Whereby when you read chapter 2 of Ephesians, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit revealed this mystery to them, to Paul and the apostles, because they all write about it. That the Gentile, so this is the mystery. So this is the mystery he's talking about. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof, of this mystery, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given to me by the effectual working of his power. To me, who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace is given. So why does he say that? Because he was trying to kill people who were in the church. He went out to kill them in the name of God. So that's why he keeps saying, I am the less than the least of the saints. Um, this grace is given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And it is unsearchable. If you go in and you start seeing this, this uh, riches in the Hebrew prophets, it's just endless. It's everywhere. And um, it's incredible when you start to really see the prophecies in my channel, I've gone through a lot of it, and there's a lot more. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Okay, the fellowship, that's the uh, all men, all men created equal are invited to be in the gospel through believing in Christ. That's the fellowship. Okay. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So from the beginning of the world, it's in there, but it's hidden behind a veil. Um, in the creation of the world, you'll see things like, let us make man in our image. So there's... Uh, there's this God is one, but there's this plurality in God. So that's part of the mystery, and and the uh, the prophecy to Eve uh, that a child uh, of her seed shall break, step on the serpent, crush the serpent's head. That is also a prophecy of Christ. And it just goes on and on from there through the entire Hebrew Bible. So that's the, the veiled mystery that is now being made known. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Now that's an interesting statement. Principalities and powers in heavenly places. Let's take a quick look at Daniel. 
So let's take a look at here, Daniel chapter 10, verse starting in verse 10, okay? And behold, so Daniel was praying for, to God about uh, the visions that he had seen. He says, And behold, a hand touched me which set upon which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood trembling. And he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for the, from the first day you sent Set your heart to understand, and chasten yourself before your God. The words were, your words were heard, and I am come for your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. But lo, Michael, the one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I came to make you understand what shall befall your people in the latter days, for the vision is yet for many days. So, if we look at verse 18, Then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. And he said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be to thee, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he spoke to me, I was strengthened. And he said, Let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. And he said, Do you know why I came to you? And now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Greece shall come. But I will show you what was what is noted in Scripture of truth, and there is none that holds with me in these things but Michael, your prince. So I suppose Michael is the prince of Judah, and there's a prince of Persia and a prince of Greece. Now, the, during this time in Daniel's life, uh, Daniel was a um, um, a counselor to the king of Persia and uh, Darius and there were wars with Greece so this is the Greco-Persian wars which became a very big moment in history uh, a changing of empires so apparently there's um, heavenly beings uh, in charge of each of these kingdoms that and some are fighting with others about uh, um, who's helping who they're not all together uh, working there there was a war in heaven as Revelation tells us uh, there's something going on here above the realm of mankind so now we're back in Ephesians chapter 3 verse 10 to the intent, so all these things that Paul is making known, the mystery of the kingdom of God to the Gentiles, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places, these angels that might be known by the church or through the church, so that these angels that uh, are in charge of different areas of the earth or different kingdoms of the earth that they might find out this mystery from the church because they didn't understand it either so there's the good ones and the bad ones the ones that are working for God and there's ones working against God they're finding out also from us they're finding out this mystery of the kingdom of God and now they probably get it like way quicker than we do because they know the Bible better than we do um, in some ways like they've been around they know exactly what it's talking about 
and we are we don't know the history as well as they do in other words so they're also finding out from us and from Paul the mysteries of God according to the eternal purpose which he proposed in Jesus Christ our Lord so this was God's purpose from the beginning in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him so by faith in Christ and by the Holy Spirit faith in God we have access to God and that gives us confidence and boldness even against these principalities and powers which are which are against us sometimes therefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you which is your glory so he's going through his tribulations uh, don't worry about me this is being done on your behalf for this cause I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ of whom the whole family and in heaven and earth is named of Jesus through Jesus he's in charge of the whole family in heaven and earth and his father put him there that he would grant to you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man that you may have boldness and confidence and knowledge of God that makes you like a warrior like strong for God that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that you being rooted and grounded in love love for God and love for one another that you may be able to comprehend with all the Saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height that you may understand the whole thing and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be fulfilled that you might be filled with all the fullness of God so there's no limits now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us so Jesus is able to do anything of even more than we can comprehend according to the power of the Holy Spirit that works in us to him be glory in the church the church that's the people of God who have the Holy Spirit it's no um, organization of men um, there are people in those organizations who are of that nature but those organizations themselves are not the church the church is the people of God by Jesus Christ throughout all ages world without end amen so that ends the sitting and the gaining knowledge part of Ephesians um, in chapter uh, 4 we're going to start talking about walking in Christ so this is um, you know these three chapters are incredible if you meditate on these chapters and understand that we are directly connected with Jesus Christ who is in charge of everything in heaven and earth and that he wants to help us but there are these principalities and powers that oppose us in some places and I think everybody to nowadays can clearly see that going on that um, you know just to understand what a Christian's place is in all of this so I'll see you next week we'll learn more and uh, continuing on in chapter 4 and thank you for watching don't forget to like share subscribe 
and hit that little bell on the, on the notifications there so you get notified when a new video comes out. Thank you very much.